rabbits have uh, been an animal I've been interested in for a long time. Um, you know, and kind of same thing. I grew up with the the understanding that, like you said, you know, rabbits are something that are in a cage and, you know, are up on your dresser or, you know, they're not, you know, perhaps the most interesting pet to have. Um, but the more I started looking into them, the more I realized that they were a really interesting animal. And I did a ton of research for about six months, um, kind of thought that I really grasped what it would take to, to own a rabbit as well as, you know, the space they would need and uh, adopted my first one from um, a rescue. Uh, so he was three months old at the time. I'm not terribly sure of his history, if he was, you know, surrendered or if he, if he was found as a stray, um, but he was, you know, a cute little three-month-old rabbit I named Oakley. And, um, you know, with having him and still wanting to look into different resources uh, to uh, gain more knowledge about how I could be the best uh, rabbit owner, um, I very quickly started also seeing stories and posts kind of like you mentioned about injured rabbits and, you know, um, rabbits in need of foster homes or lots of sightings of of stray domestic rabbits just in my local neighborhood, um, you know, wandering the streets. And they're like a domestic cat or dog that, um, you know, they can't survive it, it out in the wild. We've domesticated them and kind of taken away their, their natural abilities to be able to survive. Um, and so that's really um, what led me to start wanting to help rabbits is realizing how popular of a pet they were, um, as well as, how much help they needed, especially in the Ottawa area. Um, at the time, there wasn't um, any rescues specifically dedicated to helping rabbits. And so it was really just the Ottawa Humane Society that was there to, to assist them when they were in need. So you, you started by like unofficially helping rabbits in any way that you could. And then yes. when did you first get the idea to make it official and start Ottawa Rabbit Rescue or, or start to, you know, foster or those kind of things? Um, so it would have been just over two years ago. Um, I have always uh, been involved with dog rescue. So I was doing some work fostering dogs at the time. And um, I had gained a little bit of an understanding about how a rescue and a nonprofit organization worked um, and kind of what it took to to run one. Um, and so that's when kind of the idea came about is I was surrounded by these people that had wonderful um, experience and knowledge with operating a nonprofit organization. And so I, I said, you know, what's something I can do to help? And um, that is what I thought I could bring to the table. Um, you know, I'm not able to open uh, an entire facility or a shelter, but I can, you know, start a small base rescue and, you know, what whether it's one rabbit or, or five rabbits, um, I, I thought I could try and make a difference in that way. Um, you had mentioned that um, fostering is also good because it it helps to kind of socialize the rabbits and and you know you're you're teaching them to to trust uh, humans and you're teaching them proper litter etiquette and and all those things. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. So, um, you know, in a shelter environment, it can be very much stressful for a rabbit. Um, and, you know, they are provided with, with excellent care. Um, however, it is kind of, you know, not the same care that you would get in a, in a home environment. Um, they're in kind of generally those smaller typical cages that you would think of uh, that you would buy from a pet store for a rabbit. Um, and, you know, they just don't have the time to dedicate to litter training and things like that. Um, so foster foster based rescue is really important because it really gives us an idea as to what a rabbit's true personality is. Um, it gives them time to kind of decompress if they're coming from a shelter environment. Um, you know, they, they can uh, bring their stress levels down and, and start to feel comfortable. And um, a lot of our, our foster volunteers are, are so critical in, in giving them kind of that extra boost and extra kind of gold stars to put on their, their adoption application that they are litter trained or, um, you know, they're able to tell their future adoptive family what their favorite toys are what their favorite veggies are um, and so they really just help uh, to make these rabbits more adoptable.
what what would you say exactly are, are the, the 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 role of or the duties of Ottawa Rabbit Rescue? So um, our honestly, our main goal is to educate. Um, mm-hmm. I think you know there is a huge misconception as to what type of pet rabbits are, and I think you know for us to make any difference, um, it it really needs to be uh, to to educate the public and to just gain a better understanding of, of what it takes to own a rabbit as a, as a pet, um, how much time that, that they, you know, they require as well as funds. Um, so that would be kind of our, our first uh, goal in our mission. Um, the, the second is to, to assist rabbits in need. So we do uh, primarily focus on trying to assist rabbits that are either found outside as strays or are running out of time in shelters. Um, there is a different kind of method that you can take rabbits in via rescue, which would be an owner surrender. So that's coming from a situation where they are already in a home and for whatever reason, they're not able to care for the rabbit any longer. Um, that those rabbits are in need, um, but of course, a rabbit on the street is is slightly more um, at risk and in danger. And so, those are the ones that we we do strive to to um, help out first whenever we can. Mm. Well, that's what we're doing today, right? Is educating and raising awareness, and and we'll see what what good can come out of this uh, this conversation, which is awesome. So. Yes. Why, why do you think that it's dogs and cats that get all the attention? So people know that there's, there's humane societies, there's, there's rescues for dogs and cats. You see, you know, commercials and, and, you know, when I first moved here, I went out for a walk and there was a sign to, to foster or adopt cats and dogs. It's like, it's like they have the attention, they have the funding, um, mm-hmm. why, why do you think it is that the focus is on dogs and cats and rabbits kind of get, you know, a little less of the love? Um, I, I think, uh, again, it comes from education and, and just knowledge of, of the general public about what, um, a rabbit can be for you as a pet. Um, so cats and dogs are seen, you know, as animals that are the perfect companion. They can give you unconditional love. They're interactive with you. Um, you know, a lot of people can kind of, uh, transfer human, uh, emotions or qualities onto them. And, and people don't think of rabbits as that. They think, you know, that they're just there, um, that they, you know, probably just eat and sleep. Um, you know, they might have seen them before in petting zoos, um, things like that. And they don't see them as intelligent, emotional animals. Um, and I think that is really why they're kind of skipped over. Um, and, you know, as, as you've come to learn, they're, they're fantastic animals. Um, they have huge personalities. They all have individual personalities. Um, they, you know, will very much tell you what they like and don't like. They can learn tricks. Um, they can, you know, learn to be uh, called by their name. Um, and um, they, you know, they really are a, a really great family, family pet. Rabbits are essentially silent, which is good for me with the recording I do, whether it's for music or podcasts or whatever. So it's, it's like, you know, Violet's right there and you're not going to hear a sound, which is, which right. is perfect. Um, so they, they communicate in other ways. So if they're angry, they do the thump, which is where, you know, thumper comes from. Everyone knows a cartoon rabbit. Um, in what ways do do they do they communicate so you could talk about the thump or other things that they do yeah so they have a a wide range of ways that they communicate with us um so as you mentioned uh the thump is kind of one of the more um classic ones that a lot of people may know of and they as you said use that to communicate when they're either upset um, or even to um, to communicate when they sense danger uh, so there actually have been stories of, of people where you know they've been woken up in the middle of the night because of the rabbit thumping and they've woken up to you know a fire in their home or, or things like that um, 
They uh, will also, um, if they are upset with you or, or displeased with something, um, they are able to make kind of small grunts. Um, so, you know, if you're rearranging their blankets in a way that they don't like, um, or if they're feeling threatened in any way. So, um, you know, if you're putting your hands kind of in um, to pet them and they're, they're not in the mood, they can communicate that way. Um, they also uh, do communicate um, when they're happy. Um, rabbits actually purr. And so- But it it's is, not like a cat's purr, it's right. different. It's um, their, their teeth actually will chatter together um, and um, it can be quite loud, um, but that is, uh, you know, when they're really happy. So if they're just kind of flopped out, um, relaxing, or if you're petting them and they're in a really, you know, pleasant, relaxed, happy state, you can often hear them purring. Um, and uh, the sign of a truly happy, relaxed bunny is when they are, you know, flopped out on their side, which your girl Violet is <laughs> so great at doing. Um, and, uh, you know, that is because they are a, a prey animal. Um, that's kind of showing that they are extremely comfortable and feeling very safe in their environment. Um, so you can really tell a lot by their body language as well. Mm, so the thump is like you mentioned, a lot of times it's if they're scared, it can be if they're disoriented, if they're confused. Um, so Violet woke me up one time thumping. And it's because that day during the day I had rearranged. So she's, she's scared of hardwood floors for some reason. Like, I don't know if there's like something in her past where something happened on a hardwood floor, but I had to go out and buy all these mats. I'm all hardwood floor in, in my place. So I had to build a tunnel of mats for her to go where she wants. And I had actually moved the mats around a bit. I had rearranged. So then at nighttime, it's, you know, quite a bit darker and her space has been rearranged just a few hours earlier. So I think she was kind of scared and disoriented. So yeah. it's like, they don't do it for no reason. It's, it's they're right. communicating to you. So, you know, you go out and you kind of pet them and calm them down and turn the lights on a bit. And, and it's, you diffuse the situation, but that's my experience with the thump. Yeah. And then the ultimate sign of pleasure is the illustrious binky. Can you talk about what a binky is? Where does that term come from? Any idea? <laughs> yes. I, I forgot to mention the binky. Um, so I, you know, I truly don't know where that term came from. I think, you know, it's probably one of those great things where someone came up with it one day and it stuck. Um, so uh, a binky is basically when rabbits uh, are jumping for joy. Um, so, you know, kind of like uh, puppies, they can get zoomies sometimes and they'll, you know, zoom around the room when they're when they're happy and, and feeling playful. And, um, you know, they'll jump up in the air and and kick out their back legs and shake their head. And and, and that's them, again, feeling really, really comfortable and, and confident uh, where, where they are and, and is them uh, kind of playing, really. Um, but uh, yeah, it is a funny word. And um, it is something that is, you know, much loved in the rabbit community. Um, if you, you ever have videos of Violet binking, please record them and send them to us and post on, you know, the Facebook group because everyone always adores seeing those. Yeah, it's it it seems to me like it's like an involuntary jump for joy. It's like it looks like they just cannot control themselves. It's like the Holy Spirit comes over them <laughs> and and they it's it's like they suddenly find themselves in the air. Like they don't know how they got there and they're they just kind of twist and land. Like it's like they they jump and they don't know where they're gonna land. It's like the yeah. weirdest, like contorted uh, involuntary motion, but it just, it's, it's like if there was pure joy captured in a movement, it's that, you know? Exactly. Exactly. They, they really show when they're truly happy and it, it is adorable. Yeah. It makes me pretty happy when, uh, when I see her do it. So <laughs> she actually does it almost on cue now. So, um, we'll talk about what they eat in their diet. Uh, a part of that is, you know, the, the rabbit, pellets, the little pellet mm -hmm. food. So she has these five cups that you can stack with a few pellets in each. So she has to figure out how to take the cups apart and flip them over and all that. But whenever she hears the cups and she knows pellets are coming, 
She takes off into the living room, runs around, does a binky and comes back in time to get them. It's like on cue now. It's it's like the sound triggers the binky, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Those are the the cups you mentioned. Stacking cups are a well-loved toy uh, with rabbits. Um, I don't know what it is with them, but they they love puzzles and knocking things over. And so I think it's it's the perfect uh, combination. And uh, I'm not surprised that she has made those her favorite. 